This is a quick project where I wanted to put a fairly cheap DRO on my new mill from Little Machine Shop. Uh, there's some challenges when just using the manual feeds to uh, position the head. Uh, those are, it's difficult to use metric. Uh, the mill's set up for Imperial at the moment. Uh, it's difficult dealing with backlash in the, in the handles and it's difficult counting turns and graduations and here's an example of using the mill in the normal old manual mode. So first to move metric dis distances I had a whole bunch of calculations to work out how many turns I needed to to do. Uh, parts of this video is sped up so I'm not really turning the handle as fast as it, it looks on some of these. Uh, so I had to move it something like uh, 12 turns and 37 graduations to move it far enough to get about uh, 20 millimeters uh, distance between the, the ends. Same thing for the y-axis. Uh, I had to count the, the right number of turns here and graduations, then go back to the x-axis, counterclockwise, go back 12 go back and point uh, and 37 graduations. Okay, a lot of counting and things to keep track of. And there's a bit of backlash here as well in these uh, handles. That's expected for a mill but just one more thing I have to watch out for is to make sure I move it handle back and re-zero it when I to get rid of backlash and then the final Y cut is to go back again it was something like 12 turns 37 graduations to go back so I had to get all these counts right to get rid of the backlash and you can see here from the the results I must have missed one of the, the turns because uh, it doesn't line up. And it's kind of, I got lucky, it's about 20 uh, millimeters, but uh, I wouldn't want to measure that too exactly. Uh, more luck than good management got me there. So I could have got the official DRO kit from Little Machine Shop, but it's something like $500, a uh, bit rich for me. Uh, and I just wanted to try out DROs first. So I decided to use these cheaper DROs that were $31 each. But to do this, I'd need some mounts. Just to mount uh, the DROs to the mill are uh, actually five uh, 3D printed parts. I'm using Fusion 360 here, and I've actually put the files, both as Fusion 360 files up on GitHub and STL files if you want to take them straight into something like Kira. Uh, so five parts. So for the Y axis, uh, it has this part here that attaches to existing holes in the in the in the base of the unit of the mill. Uh, so I call this DROY top. Then this fits into that that top part, and the DRO end of the DRO connects onto these two holes here. You'll see later. I'm going to put in some metal inserts just to make sure they're firmly held. And then at the front of the the mill. Uh, this holds onto the front of the DRO, so again, uh, connects up to a little uh, aluminium piece that I, I connected to the front of the mill, and has two holes here that connect into the the DRO head. And then for the x-axis, similar sort of idea, so it's got this block here that fits into the front of the DRO using some existing 4mm holes that are in the bed of the, the mill. And this tail piece uh, fits onto the end of the DRO and fixed, fits onto the existing uh, one of the T bolts on the on the bed. And the idea with all this was that I wanted just to use existing holes, didn't want to have to drill holes in my mill just to get this going. And wanted to make it easily attachable and detachable, so it uses a lot of uh, uh, bolts where you just have to unscrew the bolts to take the whole DRO off and because the DRO is only six inch uh, length uh, using this bolt into the into the T squares in the in the unit uh, allows me to move it around a bit to get within sort of that six, uh, six inch range of movement of the DRO which works for most of the things I'm doing. So I printed the pieces up, they went pretty well. Uh, I had to separate some of the pieces like that first and second piece. I separated them and then actually glued them together uh, later. It just made the printing easier. 
Then where I was screwing the pieces together, I put in these uh, brass inserts. It just makes the screws firmer. And again, with the arrows, you really don't want things moving around. Uh, so I used a press with a soldering iron uh, to get them in and make sure that they're 90 degrees to the piece. This shows how the components get mounted for the x-axis. So the block goes in, there's two existing 4mm screw holes in the base of the mill here that it can go into and a DRO can attach to the top of that. And I have a bolt-on connection to the actual uh, mill bed. So this can move around and allows me to set up where the 6 inches of movement in the DRO can start from. And then on the y direction, the piece I glued together uh, goes down one end of the DRO. So two bolts into the side. Again, there's existing 4mm screw holes there in the base for that. Then the end of the DRO attaches to that piece. And then the head of the DRO attaches to an aluminium plate that I uh, connected to the base with that uh, that that nut. Okay, to compare using the DRO, I did the same sort of cut. Uh, so I've just got a block of PLA here I printed out. Uh, same as the manual tests. But this time I was doing all the measurements just using the, the DRO. Uh, so other than having to subtract the size of the the milling head, uh, the calculation was pretty easy. I was just looking at the, how many millimeters I needed to move on the DROs. And uh, we can see here the the second test block and then compared to the first one uh, I'm a lot happier with the second one a lot easier to do two uh, so it ended up being 20 millimeters on each uh, each side and uh, you can see the first one there it's a bit rougher because I went too deep but uh, uh, you can see the the sizing of the of the square I cut was a lot better with the second cut so I'm I'm happy with the my $60 DROs at the moment